Good morning. It's great to see everybody today. It's a beautiful day out there. I um, hope you enjoyed yesterday. It was one of the nicest days we've had in a long time. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to start a video for you. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, we have uh, the Ladies Who Lunch meeting on Tuesday, and also Games Galore are meeting on Tuesday. You can sign up for those things on our app. If you need help with that, see one of us and we will give you some assistance. There's probably sign-up sheets in the back as well. Uh, also, don't forget Season Men meets on Tuesdays, and they are at Gus's. I think that's everything. Uh, we're going to show you a video from our trip last week. Michelle, you can start turning off the lights. That's okay. I always know Annika's quick. All right. So I'm going to read you. The, the, the trip, if you remember, was our senior high with uh, our leaders went to Appalachia, and we uh, were helping folks uh, repair houses, uh, did a lot of ramp building, did a lot of, uh, really our work was all outside, but they do all kinds of stuff, roofing, ramp building, and all kinds of things. You'll see pictures of us in various places. I want to read the words to you because they're, they're kind of hard to see. It says, our first day was a travel day. We arrived at Trinity bright and early Sunday morning, said our goodbyes to our parents, loaded up our vans, and headed on our way to Logan County, West Virginia. Once we arrived, we began meeting the people we would be spending the rest of our time with at ASP. We got supper, we got settled, and we tried to get a long night's rest to prepare for the very busy week. Our first full day in beautiful West Virginia had finally arrived on day two. We loaded up and headed out to the work sites for the very first time and jumped right into whatever project we were given, even though we didn't have any skill. Once arriving at our sites, we unloaded and introduced ourselves to the homeowners. We got started right away, hoping to get as much done as possible. On day three, we met a dog. You'll see the dog. He tried to drive my van. I wasn't happy. But he was very cute, and we hopefully found him a home. And we were trying to avoid what had become very stormy weather. This day, day three, was not easy. The rain was far from over, but we still had lots of work to do. We persevered through the less than great conditions, got as much work done as we could, and nothing was stopping us from doing that work. On day four, our prayers were answered. We woke up, and the sun was shining for a little while. So it was off again to the work sites to continue helping the homeowners as we could. Of course, over the course of the week, rather, we had not just been for performing house repairs. We had also been blessed with the opportunity to get to know the amazing people who lived in these homes. Some of the homeowners even went above and beyond to show us their gratitude. Their treats were definitely not required or even expected, but they were so appreciated, especially after our hard work. By day five, we were really getting the hang of things. At this point, we were all willing to try new things. We would try a new skill or a tool as a team, and once our crew leaders had things under control, they were even willing to let the youth take a try. Not all the trip was work. We had many opportunities to get to know the other groups at Logan County. Thursday was one of these days. We had a cookout and played games. Afterwards, we headed back to our base to celebrate a very special member of our group, Council President Tina Ahrens, whose birthday it was. On day six, Friday was here, and we couldn't believe it. It was our last day of the work, so we tried to get as much done as we could. Just like that, our last work day was coming to a close, and we started to say goodbye to the people and places we had grown so fond of over the past few days. We were all so grateful for the connections and memories we were able to make during our time at ASP. All that, by the way, was written by our kids, uh, especially Sarah Hamm, and there's a thank you at the end. Thank you so much to all the people that dedicated their time, skills, or in our case here, our resources to making this trip possible for senior high. We and the people we served are so incredibly grateful. Special thanks to Michelle Shirk for her incredible planning, as well as our adult chaperones, Tina, Dennis, Allison, Jim, and Pastor Mike. Okay, Annika.
kids and leaders. And let's stand for our opening hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. sail beyond the sea still I find you there Father I know you are near standing always at my side you hold me in your arms you 
You who form me within my mother's womb In the safety of darkness Before I saw the sun Still I find you there Father Standing always at my side You hold me in your arms And you lead me in ways everlasting Marvelous to me are your works all creation proclaims that you are Lord. All the earth sings your praises, their voices joined as one, knowing you are the Father, I know you are me. Standing on be with you let us pray almighty God you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church open our hearts to the riches of grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear we pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord amen we'll continue with the reading The first reading comes from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have, sa have said, who prophecy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophecy lies and who prophecy the, the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Thanks. We're going to move to the children's sermon. I'm not preaching on Hebrews today. So, we're having Michelle come up, if anybody wants to come up and join her. Come on up, it's okay. Oh, we have big kids today too, love it, yay. All right everyone, I need everyone's help. Let's call JJ, JJ. Hello, 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 Misha. Well, hello there, JJ. I have some exciting news. Oh, you do? Do tell. There is a new family at school. Oh, that's always exciting. Yeah, there's a boy who's a grade ahead of me and a girl in my grade. Mm, do they have names? No, we just yell, hey, and they come right. Ha ha, very funny. Of course they have names. His name is Abia, and her name is... Adala. Oh, wow. Those are really beautiful names. Yeah, Joe and Sally, they are not. <laughs> Our area is changing, JJ. Years ago, everyone was German or Scots-Irish. Oh, that's true. There were also African-Americans who had been slaves looking for a better life. And, oh, then there were the French Huguenots. The Oh, no, silly. The Huguenots were from oh. France. They came here because they weren't allowed to worship God the way they wanted to. Oh, my goodness. Il est terrible. <laughs> oui, très terrible. But a lot of folks came to this area to get away from bad situations. That had to be hard. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Michelle. Yes? When all those folks got here and met the other folks here, did people think they were, you know, different? Well, sure. And you're right. It's hard sometimes to be different. Yeah. I get the feeling you want to ask something. <sighs> well, a beer and a dollar, uh, they're different, too. Mm, okay, go ahead. Uh, their mom wears a scarf on her head, and, and she's not supposed to take it off. And Adala says someday she will wear one too. Mm-hmm. That's called a hijab. It's something oh. Muslim women wear. Well, it's, it's kind of pretty, but I don't understand it. Well, it's a symbol of modesty, JJ, and of other things. But it's part of her religion. Oh, oh. You mean Adala and Abir don't go to a church? Well, they go to a different kind of church, JJ. It's oh. called a mosque. Okay, so they don't believe in God. Well, actually, JJ, their God is our God. Just like us, they trace their belief in God all the way back to Abraham. Wow. Abraham was busy. <laughs> their faith is called Islam, JJ. And people who are Islamic are called Muslims. Hmm. But they believe some different things than us. That's right. There are three great world religions that came from Father Abraham. Okay. The faith of the Jewish people, the faith of the Christians, and the faith of folks like Abir and Adala. But... Do they believe in Jesus? They honor Jesus, but they don't see him like we do. But, but, but is that okay? What do you mean? I mean, do we need to make them cheat? Oh boy, that's complicated. I Jim. mean, they're happy, and, and, and Michelle, they're really nice. But some kids say if you don't believe in Jesus, you'll get, well, you get, well, you know. What? Toasted when you die. Oh, JJ, God is mm. love. We have to trust God on that. Oh, well, that's true. You know, JJ, in the Bible, Jesus meets people who are not Jewish, who are not Jewish. They were Samaritans, oh. Greeks, Romans. Really? Yes, and he talks to them with respect and love. Oh, wow. Sometimes he heals them from their sickness, okay. but he doesn't ever yell at them or tell them that they have to become exactly like him. Well, well, well that's good. Because I don't want everybody to be the same. Mm, me neither. It's so interesting to meet people from new places who, who have cool traditions. It would be boring if we were all alike. God made all kinds of people, JJ, and God loves us all. Ah, you think God likes different? Oh, I think God loves different. But you know what? Yeah. Different as we can be, deep inside, we are all kind of the same. Yeah, I think so too. It's true. We're all God's children. Yeah. And every one of us wants love and happiness and a good life. You know, JJ, are people yeah. being nice to Abir and Adala? Yeah, well, well, some of the kids were making fun of uh, Adala's mom's, you know, hush, hush. Hijab. Yeah, but I growled at them. Oh, JJ. Hey, they stopped. Be nice, even as you are telling them to be nice. Well, Jesus gives us a job, Michelle, to be kind. Amen. And I... Bia and Adala are really cool. Children of God usually are. And you know my family wasn't originally from here either. Oh, <laughs> really? Uh, I golden retrievers. We came with the Scots Irish. Ah, you're from Scotland. I, but we found it bunny on the land here. <laughs> Very cool. Even if the German puppies did make fun of our wee kilts. <laughs> oh, JJ. Say goodbye, JJ. All right, bye bye. See bye, kids. Right. Thanks for coming up. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why, do you not, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
I get to sit most days in a lovely spot in my house. A chair in the corner, very comfy, that allows me to look out our back window into the backyard and into the hedgerow beyond. Squirrels play, groundhogs unfortunately abound, and songbirds are everywhere, usually. But right now, it's different. Our neighbors lovingly feed the birds, and that brings them in droves, sparrows and finches and the like, flock to the feeders, blue jays fly in for peanuts, and fly across the yard, bringing them to their young, and the squirrels, of course, steal all that they can. But right now, it's much more quiet. No one's making that open flight across the yards. The creatures still come to eat, but they hug the trees on the way in and the way out. The squirrels dot, dart from spot to spot where there is cover to get their food, and generally, there seems to be a lot less chirping. The reason? A pair of hawks, we think red-shouldered hawks, have come into the area. We think they might have built a nest. And with that, everything for a while at least has changed. And the birds and the squirrels don't like it. Remember a while back when I was talking about graduation cards? These cards, almost without fail, say the wildest things. You can do anything. Go out and make your way. Let the adventure begin. But tell me what happens if you say graduate and decide to go hiking for a year in Europe rather than take a college scholarship. Well, the same people who gave you the card would say, why in the heck did you do that? Because smart or not, you did something different. You weren't supposed to change from the reasonable path of life, no matter what the card said. And the church is no different. Business is no different. We all know the stories of businesses that went down the tubes before, because they refused to change. The train industry was king in America for decades. But when trucks started to come into play for transporting goods, did the industry react? Did they start buying trucks? Did they start carrying trailers on trains to hook them up later to trucks for a relatively short haul? No. The train industry was about trains. And they died rather than change. And likewise, church after church has called a new pastor or a youth worker or a musician, asking them to bring change and innovation to the ministry, and then tried to toss them out the second they had the audacity to believe them and started doing something really radical, like, you know, moving the furniture. Our own denomination met nationally this week. And part of what was addressed is how to rebuild, how to recover. Because our refusal to change has brought about the demise of so many congregations. We are like the birds and the squirrels, confronted by the reality of a new neighbor who might eat you. We don't like change. And it seems Jesus was faced with the same issue. It's easy to imagine Jesus coming into town, and much of Luke is about him making this huge road trip. He comes in preaching and teaching and healing. And hey, it's hard not to get excited about a guy who just walks in and heals you and maybe even will feed you to boot. But later when the excitement begins to abate, when the message starts to sink in, and folks realize, hey, he's moving the chairs around, the prospect of change brings with it the thing that change always does, division. And houses get divided. Friends disagree. People start to say, now wait a second. And the situation causes stress. It even, it seems, causes Jesus stress. And by the way, if your Jesus is all God, all divinity, you know, calmly going through all the Jesus stuff, unaffected by anything, read that word stress here. And what stress I am under. Jesus was human, too. And when people started to really listen, 
to his message of sharing and justice, of truly being, as the great commandment says, as much about your neighbor as you are about yourself, well, people started giving mixed reviews. Because frankly, that's a little scary. Life is hard enough when we're trying to just get through it on our own. Living like that takes a level of trust in Jesus, in God. That's kind of hard to comprehend. Changing a worldview like that, that's really changing the furniture around. You know, a lot of people this week are going to look at this lesson. They're going to make it political. A lot of preachers are going to look at the element of justice and what Jesus did and say that that means we need to do this and this as a country. But the job of a preacher, in my view, is not to promote policy, but rather the gospel. And Jesus is calling for a kingdom here where people are cared for, fed, and loved. He's calling for that to become a reality in our lives and our world that we work for. How we do it is up to debate and a product of how we feel it can be accomplished. I think Jesus is always saying, try to solve the problems out there, but do it the way you think you should do it. But never, Jesus would say, never think it's not your problem. And, and that makes us uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. I, it's not easy to hear that, yes, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. And the truth is there are limits. There have to be limits as to how we carry out the message if we're going to keep functioning and thrive. Even Jesus said, you'll always have the poor with you. But we can't stop trying. And if we're honest, we know we sometimes do. And that has to change. That's always had to change. It was the central cry of the prophets. It was a central cry of Christ. Jesus is a little desperate here. Maybe because something in his life is changing. His time's running out. He's headed to Jerusalem. He knows what's going to happen there. He's looking at the people and he's saying, please listen to me. Because he knows his chances to make them listen are getting few. We don't like change. But as we do listen to our Lord, I think we're reminded we need to keep embracing it. No organization, no business, no church survives otherwise. Life itself shows us the need to change. If a caterpillar could refuse to go into its cocoon, it would die. And if we won't embrace the call to change, to become our personal faith, our churches will die too, or at least become hollow shells of what they should be. But while this passage is mostly Jesus scolding his listeners, the truth is the change he's calling us to is an adventure, a chance to enrich our lives in ways beyond imagining. There was a man who found he no longer believed in God. And he went to a wise, question, a wise friend rather, with his questions. Forget about God, his friend said. Just go out and start loving everything you can find in this world to love. And so the man started feeding the birds. He started a garden and tended the flowers. He planted milkweed and native plants and started watching the caterpillars and butterflies that began to call his yard home. He took a section of the stream that ran behind his house. He bought waders and started pulling trash out of it. He started watching kids' ball games and soccer matches and began making donations to cover the cost of playing for families who couldn't handle the expense. He started watching his neighbors to see if they needed help. He bought a snowblower started doing driveways for those who couldn't handle the chore. He found friends by working in a food bank, friends working beside him, friends being served. And one day he ran into that wise friend, and his wise friend said to him, Well, how are you and God doing? 
And the man replied, I see God every day. He changed. And he realized God was all around him. For real meaning is not found, as Jesus says, in possessions, in self-centered living. It is found in connecting with our neighbors, bringing the healing and love of God's kingdom. It's found in each other and finding with that that we have touched the face of God revealed there. Real meaning is found in living a life like this. And Jesus will be a whole lot less stressed if we will listen and follow. And heaven will rejoice. For heaven will be revealed among us. People of God, what does the Lord ask of us? Let us confess our shared faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and he ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. And at the right hand of the Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and holy Lord, you call for us to be changed, baptized with your baptism, united with you in a call to change the world. Give us the ability to do this and to see the joy of the task before us. Lord, in your mercy. Be with all who suffer. Bring food to the hungry, shelter to those without, and restoration for those suffering loss. Bring peace to the Ukraine and everywhere in the world where conflict reigns. Lord, in your mercy. As drought pervades in so many places, we pray for rain and for a restoration of the ecosystem wherever it is broken. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for healing for ourselves and for all who suffer from illness, mental illness, addiction, and all other maladies. Teach us to help when we can and to seek help where it is needed. Father, we especially pray for Carl Neustrand, Valerie Heslop, Carl, Carol Swanger, Mark Spirdigliosi, Charles Bowman, Joseph Clark, Jackie Johnson, Jean Weaver, George Weber, Joyce Cartwright, Deanna Dargo, and the family and friends of Mason McKellen. Lord, in your mercy. We pray and thanks for all who attended the ELCA churchwide assembly this past week. May the dec decisions reach there embody your word and prepare us for the future. Lord, in your mercy. Be with all facing transition, college students and those entering the military, those, those relocating, those entering new jobs or trying to find a job. Remind us that you are the God of opportunity and when needed, second chances. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us greet one another. Your offering will be collected at this time. Pete, I think the plates are behind you actually today. So.
Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God. Let us pray. Holy God, we have come before you bearing the simple gifts of bread, wine, and praise, anxious to be refreshed with the body and the blood of your Son. Join us with the saints who have come before us in this feast. Let the gift of Christ's presence bring us a deeper understanding of your grace, and let that grace be reflected in our lives of service to you. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated if you're commuting at home or in your seat. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ are given for you. Communion assistance, we have hand sanitizer in the front pew.
grass at night singing songs of faith watching moon and stars in flight singing songs of faith God's vast creation in bright display and still somehow God sees me singing songs of faith of faith, bringing life in human birth, singing songs of faith, giving the holy a human friend, feeding, healing all in need, singing songs then in pain and wondrous love singing songs of faith Christ redeemed us with his blood singing songs of faith, love and victorious rose from the grave, rose that we might live with him, singing songs of of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep us in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you have come to us in grace, and though we have not deserved it, you have made us whole again. Strengthen us as we go from this place to be the light of the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Stone is wrong.